talent yes, up sir. in mad here, talent. Mad up talent. in here, up in here, exactly. All right, so happening this weekend, a really, really cool event that you definitely want to uh, take part in. It is the Texas Book Festival. Oh. It's this weekend, November 11th mm. through 12th, which is also Veterans Day weekend. Uh, books are so important because of the fact that, um, you know, everybody, is, is, it seems like books all of a sudden have become a target. They've become a problem for folks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Speak and, on it. Man, well, you know, seriously, that's it's it's one of the things that I think we need to to stop looking at it. Stop looking at books as enemies. Yeah. You know, it's very easy to do that. It's very easy to do that. D- does a book force you to open it? No, it does not. It oh, does okay. Not. Right. It does not. Do, 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 is there at any point someone take a book and threaten your life with it? N- well, my mama was threatening me. That was just your backside, boy. That's- she didn't say she'd kill you with it. <laughs> she said she was... <laughs> I'm lucky if it was my backside. What are you talking about? Get out of here. Anyway, what's happening this weekend is uh, going to be a great, great event. It's a two-day event, I believe, with one of the uh, representatives uh, from the Texas Book Festival. Dalia Azim is joining us. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. A lot, lot to do between now and the weekend, but we are so excited. I can imagine. I can imagine. Now, tell us uh, the Texas Book Festival's origin or the history and what you, what you, what you guys want to accomplish this weekend. Sure. So this is the 28th annual Texas Book Festival. It was actually founded in 1995 by Laura Bush when she was the first wife of the governor and by Mary Margaret Farabee and a group of volunteers and librarians who thought we needed a great book festival in this state and um, started at the Capitol. We're still in and around the Capitol today. Um, so we will have oh, we will have about 325 authors coming to Austin this weekend for the festival. Wow. And they'll participate in more than 200 different conversations, something for everyone, books for all ages, all genres. That is incredible. Ooh. Wow, that's a lot of folks. That is a lot of folks <laughs> coming in. Um, what have you seen in terms of, of books that, um, oh, let me see, how can I put this? You know, of course, what we were talking about, um, talking about and I was just mentioning how books you know people are looking at books and saying well certain books shouldn't be in schools etc cetera, etc cetera, which I you know more or less believe it, but do you think people are are, are are shying away from books or should not shy away from books what is your theory on that uh, I think people absolutely should not shy away from books we love ch- books we're champions of books and we believe in access to books without um, restriction or censorship uh, besides the festival you talked about schools, we have a lot of year-round programs, and a big part of that is a program called Reading Rockstars, where we take authors into Title I schools across the state of Texas and have them do presentations to the kids and send every kid home with a copy of the author's book. So we absolutely believe in providing access to books, filling in the gaps. A lot of times with Reading Rockstars, it's the first book a kid will have and be taking into their personal libraries. Um, but yeah, we're here to do the good work of um, promoting books and authors and um, hosting great conversations. Amen to that. I mean, I first learned about Martin Luther King. I actually still have a book that my parents gave me about Martin Luther King and exactly what was going on at the time. Um, in, not in, you know, like really, really like gory detail, but I mean, they were talking about police arrests and, you know, dogs getting, you know, getting sick on, you know, protesters getting sick on by dogs. Um, and, and who, what Martin Luther King was about and what Coretta Scott King was about as well. So I think that's one of the things that, that kids, you know, and people need to learn in general, you know, maybe, you know, not the, not the heavy details, but I think it's important that we continue to read. And I tell my daughter that same thing. It's like one of the most important things you will ever learn to do in your life is read period yeah you know what i'm saying so um so this weekend uh tell us more about what's going on so we will be starting as you'd mentioned we are um we are overlapping with veterans day this weekend which is new for us so we've actually been working with the veterans day parade committee and they are going to be going through we share spaces basically they're on look they go from Congress Avenue Bridge up Congress to the Capitol. We are on Congress and 11th Street and in the Capitol. So we're starting a little later this year for those who've been and are familiar with us. Just note that we're starting at 11 on Saturday and we are doing some special programmings dedicated to stories by and about veterans and military history on Veterans Day in honor of veterans. And we're also um, one of, we have, um, as part of the festival, we have about 70 exhibitors. And one of the, the exhibitors that we're working with is a veteran who, um, runs the AVA Fest, and um, he'll, be, he'll be promoting his good work on suicide, veteran suicide prevention and also promoting a lot of veterans' books in his booth. 
Sounds good. Mirban Dahlia. Did I nail that? Talk Did not me. nail it. I thought it was hello. <laughs> you had to sharpen up your thing. Oh, we thought it was hello. You know, <laughs> Egyptian Arabic is quite different than other forms of Arabic. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I um, will look at you like I'm very confused. Okay. If you spoke to me <laughs> in a different like form he, of Arabic. Like he had eight heads. Was, was like, it Ahlan? Or? I, I, love, I love languages and, and uh, That's wonderful. missed on that one. So I'm, I've noticed, I've read that there has been a rise in books lately um ever since 2019 there's been a rise and uh i'm sure that only spiked even more during the pandemic but it looks like we're still on the rise i I, what i'm starting to find out in my circles people are going more towards audiobooks on their commutes uh people are are starting to read more when when i'm hearing oh yeah this is what i'm gonna do this weekend i just got such and such book uh, we've we've had a few people guests on. Uh, Nabil Ayers came on with his book, and um, I gotta admit, I really like where we're going. What do you think technology is going to do when it comes to books? Uh, and I I know you guys are more than just uh, books that are held in your hand, um, but I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts about technology and books. I think any way to get books into people's hands, in their ears, any way you can do it, it's good work. So we, um, I personally consume books in all different, um, all, all different ways. I, you know, whether it's traditional books that you open up and read off the page or um, off the Kindle. I, I'm a, kind of a later adopter to audiobooks, but now I feel like it allows me to take in about twice as many books as I otherwise would because yes. go for a walk and listen to an audiobook, listen in the car do the dishes, yes. you know, it's pretty great for that. Um, actually, one of our sponsors at Texas Book Festival is Libro FM, mm-hmm. um, and they're a social purpose organization. So a part of their um, their revenue actually goes to support our local indie bookshop, Book People, who is, they're our major bookseller for the festival. Yeah. Um, but one thing I love, they so Libro says uh, audiobooks are reading. They have these tote bags that say audiobooks are reading. And I just, <laughs> I keep thinking about that. It is, it all counts. And I think you're, we have the same, um, the same impression that you do that reading is on the rise and i think the the pandemic definitely helped us out in that way in terms of making books more popular again and a way to relate to you know the outside world you know it helps you feel engaged with the outside world helps open your eyes helps you learn new things um can spark conversation and debate among people so yeah we're here to support all that so let's get to uh there's uh, something i think i saw when it came to the festival you guys were going to have, in attendance, you guys were going to have some food trucks. Correct. You're going to have some vendors. And you're going to have some activities for kids of all ages. Because, Dahlia, I got a lot of kids. You got with 50, 11 kids. With a wide variety of ranges. <laughs> and I want to bring them all. Yep. But I just, you know, Dahlia, this sounds highbrow. You're not going to have anything for my one-year-old and my three-year-old. Am I right? No, we sure will. Oh, what? I mean, you can't come and dump them at the children's activity oh, hey, tent. They hey, do need to don't, don't judge my parenting. I feel like she's judging I mean, my jump, parenting jump style. Don't go there. off and see, you know, Stacey Abrams while the kids are hanging out. <laughs> at a he will too. Trust children's me. activity tent. No, but we do have. We we really um, we want it to be a we we are committed to it being a family friendly event. Yeah. And so not only are there activity tents for kids and also this year we're launching a new tent called Camp TTBF Texas Teen Book Festival, Ooh. which is a place for teens to hang out and engage and we have different partner organizations both in the children's activity tent and in Camp TTBF who are creating basically like whether it's um literary trivia or crafts, arts and crafts for for people who come in there, um, both days, Saturday and Sunday, will be filled with uh, with opportunities. But I also want to say, for your kids, there is um, a read me a story tent all day long, both days. We have children's authors reading their picture books. It, it's it's a really wonderful place to come hang out and see a bunch of families just like in awe of these authors that are that are reading their their books to kids. Um, we also have children's book illustrators who are doing live illustrations and teaching kids how to draw. Um, and we also, we have bilingual story time in our Leamos tent, which is our tent for Spanish speaking audiences and programming. Um, so yeah, I really try to drive home that don't, don't, don't stay home just because you think your kids won't enjoy it because they will. OMG TBH. Yeah. It sounds like TTBF is something for the kids, you know, cause they got all, they got the, the they got all those little 
little acronyms. I I don't I I wouldn't wouldn't even be able to. I bet I I wouldn't know half the stuff that's going on in TTBF, and it, it it's it's too much already. Can't even spell TTBF. So I was kind of curious. Could we be getting some Texas authors that could be in attendance? That's Our good own question. home grown Texas authors. Absolutely, that is one of maybe uh. Maybe maybe looking for? Brian Washington. You know he's a oh, Washington. It's my last I name. I know. We really I love uh, Brian Washington, and he was just here to promote his new book. Oh. Unfortunately, he had a conflict. There are always a few heartbreaks when it comes to programming yes. at a festival, and that was one of them this year. Yeah. Um, Attica Lock. Attica, I don't think has a new book out, but she okay. is a friend of the festival. She's oh. won our Texas Writer Award in the past. Oh. We love her. Um, everything she does. <laughs> so we'll get her back as, you know, as long as she's willing to come. I think she's in LA. Oh, okay. But whenever she is willing to come and has a new book, we will have her anytime. Sure. But we're going to get some homegrown. Uh, sorry. So back to the original question. Yeah, that is something that the Texas Book Festival does uniquely. And yeah. this year, I think about 40% of our authors are from Texas. What? Nice. From Texas or live nice. in Texas. That's so, awesome. Yeah, That's so identify up. with Texas as a home. Oh, there are. In some way. If they have a residence here, we got them. Yeah. We get yeah. to claim them. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. You, there's volunteers that can uh, sign up and help you guys, correct? Absolutely. We rely. I don't. We couldn't do it without our volunteers. We have about a thousand volunteers that help make the weekend possible every year. We are still looking for volunteers. So you can go to our website www.texasbookfestival.org to learn more about our volunteer opportunities. Um, but yeah, we we um, we have a veritable army of volunteers that. That make it happen. An army is good. Yeah, and you have to be, um, you said all, I'm checking it out, it says all registrants under the age of 18 have to be accompanied by an adult. So they Correct. can help out, but they have to have an adult with them. Correct. If they're under the age of 18. Right. But and great if they want to engage. Exactly. If want to help out. Exactly. Listeners, they are going to be hosting writers from all over the world. And this book festival has a national reputation as one of the most prestigious and longest running book festivals in the country. That is I mean, true. Dahlia, that's kind of a big deal. We're super proud. And actually, we're a pretty new team. I just joined the book festival a year ago, our literary director um, right behind me. And it's been an incredible honor to be part oh. of this tradition and a little bit of pressure, but I think I'm really proud of what we've pulled off. It's yeah. an amazing lineup. It, it, it sounds like it sounds like there's a lot of big heavy hitters that come by and you're like, oh, wait, you're a, uh, you're a. Uh. <laughs> yeah, for book nerds, it's yeah, it's yeah. Like celebrity sightings left and right. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> this is impactful. Uh, literacy programs, I, I believe, need events like this i think you need any time that you can get um, the american population uh, but you know we're texas we're local but if we can get the american population interested in books in reading there are we i mean we, we could sit here and we could probably talk all day about some some school programs and uh, the lack of achievement from certain young students but this is where we can get we can boost their love for reading. Literacy, I think, is a is the foremost por portion of confidence. I believe that it is the springboard. I'm not saying that because you're here, Dahlia, but I think this is the springboard for our young students. Please, listeners, come out. And I also want to mention one thing, Dahlia. Say this in Spanish for Leamos. You're gonna have the Leamos tent. How much is this going to cost? Is it gratis? It is gratis. It oh, is oh, oh. free and open to the public. <laughs> there it is. Best kept secret in Austin. <laughs> nice. uh, that's still too much for him. Uh, if you throw in a <laughs> lollipop for every book that he comes in touch, I think you can get him out. So literally, you're going to be paying him to show up. But for everybody else, you had him at free. And you, there's free parking. Oh. Cap Metro is offering free bus passes. What? Nice. Metro what? rail passes. So... There should be no barriers oh. to accessing our festival this exactly, weekend. Exactly, exactly. And there you go. All right, you want more information, folks, get on to texasbookfestival.org. It's up now. Check it out. You find out all the information about the Texas